And this is Q on CBC Radio 1 on Sirius 137, PRI and Bold Television. Well, Sean Majumder is one of the most original comics to come out of Canada in recent years. You might say it's the kind of talent that travels. The Newfoundland-born, L.A.-based comic began his career doing stand-up at Yuck Yuck's legendary Crash and Burn Mondays. He rose to headliner status and became a YTV host in the process. <laughs> but it was in 1999 and a roof-raising set at Montreal's Just for Laughs Comedy Festival that landed him a $60,000 exclusivity deal with the American television network CBS. And from that moment on, Sean Majumder began splitting his time between Halifax, Toronto, and Los Angeles. For years, it hasn't been unusual to see him in multiple roles on any given night on TV. Flipping the channels, you might well see him in a grim terrorist role opposite Kiefer Sutherland in Fox TV's 24, or as the ever sweaty Raj Binder on the CBC comedy show This Hour Has 22 Minutes. It's been enough to make you wonder if Sean Majumder has made his home on an airplane. And to add to the mystery, the Gemini award-winning comic now stars in ABC's cop drama Detroit 187. He's a very funny man. He's a fine actor, and he does a lousy impression of me, and he's here in studio. <laughs> I love Shama it. Sean Majumder, hello, sir. How are you, man? This is cool. This is cool. I want you to know that the cast of, uh, well, specifically Michael Imperioli, Absolutely loves uh, CBC Radio Two. He came to he came to work one morning. CBC goes, Radio Two. Radio Radio Two. I know this is main, Radio One, major yeah. big radio network. But I want you to know yeah. that CBC is getting lots That's of play great. in yeah. Detroit because we're right across the border. Yeah. And uh, he comes to work and he goes, "Now you're from Newfound Newfound. What is it?" And I said, "Newfoundland." He goes, "Yeah, there's a radio station on." that I can't stop listening to in the morning, 6 a.m. to whatever. That's great. Uh, and it's uh, it's from Newfoundland, is what he said. Because here's why. Because they say, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in Newfoundland. <laughs> right. So he thinks it's in Newfoundland, <laughs> right. from Newfoundland, right, in a right, tiny right, right. little hut. And This uh, is Michael Imperioli of, Mike of Imperioli Sopranos is fame. The Sopranos yeah. fame, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. So I've been listening to CBC since I moved to Detroit. So moved. Moved. Living. So you actually are you shooting this in Detroit? We're shooting in Detroit. That makes sense. Living in Detroit. I've had to buy furniture in Detroit and find an apartment in a little area called Royal Oak, which is just north of the downtown core. But you wait a minute. So you know already that Detroit One Eight Seven is gonna go is gonna last long enough. I'm not, of, of course one. I would hope it does. I would expect it. But yeah, but, but enough so that you wanna that you buy furniture. Yeah. Well, what they did was they said okay. We've, we, we were going to shoot 13 episodes. We've got an order for 13. So 13 episodes of, of uh, American drama goes over a period of about four to five, six months, right? So they said, you know, we're not going to put you up at the MGM casino. You're going to have to, we're going to give you a fee. Everybody had to find an apartment. I got there mid-July and uh, found an apartment and bought some furniture and that's it. Now I moved there. You know, it's very strange. I drove my truck across the country listening to you in Utah, right. interestingly nice, enough. Nice, yep. Uh, I put the you in Utah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so so that's where we are now, you know. And so we've got 13. By the way, you, you, you moved from L.A. to Yeah, Detroit, moved yeah. from L.A. all the way across. It's and, exciting, and, man. Yeah, now, it's cool. i, I got to tell you, we're, you know, I, 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 and I, and I want to get to talk about it a bit with uh, about comedy with you too, but but this Detroit one eight seven, I've not been able to see in advance of the show. ABC mm -hmm. didn't give us uh, any any copies of it, um, so I, I don't know exactly what your character. I'm assuming you're not just playing a sweaty terrorist again. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. Tell me you're not playing a, a guy who blows things up again. No, I'm on right. the other side of the law now. You're a good guy. I'm a good guy. Uh, my partner. I'm a I'm a I'm a homicide detective. You play a a, a, a detective. Detective. His name is Vic. Now it's spelled M A H A J A N, Mahajan. Mahajan. But they have again, and and I feel horrible about this. But they have just dubbed me, and they've said, "Nope, it's Mahjan." <laughs> so I'm Detective Mahjan. I said, "No, I've checked with my with the Indian consulate in <laughs> India." <laughs> And they said, it's Mahajan. They're like, nope, my friend is called Mahjan. We went back and forth and back and forth on this. Right. And finally, I'm like, I'm not going to fight this right. at all. So you I play mean, Detective Mahjan. V Detective Mahjan. <laughs> right. You know, and he's a homicide, seven okay. years in DPD, seven years homicide with DPD. And uh, his partner, uh, played by James McDaniel, uh, who was from NYPD Blue, he was the... Uh, Lieutenant on, uh, is it Lieutenant? He was the black leader of the office. 
<laughs> he was the black. Oh guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so anyway, he's my partner. James McDaniel plays him. I mean, he's fantastic. And so it's it's uh, you know that that's it. We go out. We get cases every week. It's usually him and I. We do our little story. We have our little story together. And then the rest of the cast kind of follows a case intermingled between the other five, four or five cast members. As well, there's so, a lot of cop shows out there, and you've done a fair bit of American TV shows. Yeah, everything from Cedric the Entertainer to sitcoms like uh, The Rules Are Starting Over. Tell yeah. me, what was it about Detroit 187 that that captured you? Well, I mean, you know, it, it, when you're auditioning for shows in LA, you're not sure what's going to come out the other side. You're just like, okay, I've got this audition. He's a character. He's a cop. Can you go do it? Yes, I can go do it. So I go do it. You get good feedback. They call you back in. You're like, okay, what is it? So it's it, originally this show was inspired by a show on A&E called The First 48. Have you seen The First 48? Mm-hmm. It's it's a documentary series that is very true. It's a it's a, they follow around homicide detectives and it's a documentary series. So they wrote the show originally with th- modeled after that. Mm-hmm. And so you've got documentary cameras following around homicide detectives but all written scripted, you know, well laid out. Then all of a sudden, there was a there was an experience that happened in Detroit where the first forty eight they were following homicide detectives around. A young girl got shot in the while they were there filming, and and it all went crazy. And uh, they said, nope, no more camera crews allowed to follow DPD around. So ABC had to go back to the drawing board and say, maybe we shouldn't do this as a documentary series mm-hmm. because it's not going to service. It's not going to it's not going to be the right fit. So they re kind of they reshot some of the pilot that's why you haven't gotten it yet because they're not it's probably done now hopefully have you seen it uh i've seen a latest version but it's still not the one this was like a week and a half how ago. you feel about it i like it i like it man it's it's going to be different it's going to be unique it's uh, the pilot is kind of you know it's setting up all these characters it's going to be much more about the characters it's about their relationships with each other it sounds it's, a little more the wire than law and order Absolutely, right. it's a, it's a little of the wire, less edgy because it's ABC Disney, of course. But um, there's humor in it. There's really all the characters in it have such great comedic chops. It's not a comedy by any means, but as in real life, you know, there's there's humorous moments. Things don't always land the way they're supposed to land. Things don't happen the way they're supposed to. When when you, when you say comedic chops, I mean it might be strange for Canadians who know you. Yeah. So much so as a comic. That's right. To see you in so many serious roles on American TV shows. Mm-hmm. How do you navigate between those two worlds? Do you draw on the same skills for your dramatic roles as you would for comedy? Absolutely. I definitely do. And depending on, you know, whatever the show is, like for 22 minutes. And but you're still doing it. No, I'm not doing it. You're not doing it at all. I can't do it just by way of uh, no time. I they can't. won't let you. No, I just can't do it physically because I'm in Detroit. We're shooting that show all the time. It's it's just not going to – and ABC won't let me go out and do 22 minutes and do 187. Right. Right. But anyway, uh, definitely drawing from both. As an actor, as a creative person, you know, one thing I've always believed in, especially with comedy, it has to be truthful. If it's not truthful, you know, the comedy is going to be a little – and you can feel that when something is forced or pushed or, you know, you're trying to make something funny – it's generally, you're like, ah, uh, not so much. I find the best, like like Ricky Gervais is a perfect example. Right, right. He's a brilliant comedic actor, but he's also, he's a wonderful actor. He plays things so truthfully. How is Raj Binder truthful? It's not. It's a sketch character. But people love that. People that love works. it. That it's works. That works. Yeah. But that's, a, that's, a, that's kind of a cartoon version of something. I would never, that's for sketch, but you can't put him, I'm not sure if you can. In a series? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe not. Would it, I think it'd be too much. I think right. it's funny right. to, as a little, like, he shows up at the NBA All-Star game <laughs> and goes, hey, what's happening? <laughs> blop de bloop de blop Hey, are you okay, man? You sweating. Well, okay, back to you, Critch. You know, that's uh, that's it. I like it, your but... impression of the basketball player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that so, was a yeah. uh, coach. It wasn't a player. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, you know, so so Raj is a unique thing. It's like a little hey man, monster you under okay? itself. You're sweating. <laughs> hey, what happened? You're sweating. <laughs> hey, uh, how's the weather down there? <laughs> so anyway, no. It, it, it basically, you know, because I've I've been acting for a long time, like throughout high school, and then you know, in college for a year, and it's 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 been amazing that I'm at this point now where I'm able to do everything that I love like it's crazy this show is a dramatic series they're writing all kinds of great stuff for me and they're trusting me with 
you know, really intense kind of interrogation scenes. And how, how important, it is going to be different. How for people important is it for you to play serious roles? I mean, is there part of you that kind of goes, this will make me, then people will take me more seriously if I'm, if I'm playing these roles? Well, I think every, you know, person in this industry, I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I've always felt that, you know, it, I'd never like being pigeonholed into anything, anything ever, ever. It, so, this has been a wonderful. Well, I've always known that I can do, you know, dramatic roles. I know I can do comedic roles, and and it just so happens the universe lined up so that there's a role for me on a major network drama, that I also get to incorporate my comedy as well. It, it, it's a it's ridiculously. I'm so blessed to be able to do this. At the same time, yes, I am very thankful because now people will see. Oh wait. So he's not just a Raj Bender, especially mm -hmm. in Canada. I mean, we're this is a CBC world. There's people who haven't seen Raj Bender in Canada, but you know, it, it's just it's great. I get to be creative and do all kinds of great stuff. So, you know, it's I don't have anything to prove, but I've always known I can do it, and now it's going to be on national TV. It's going to be kind of weird because it's it's, it, it's a big one because because Dancing with the Stars is the lead in. They mm -hmm. get like something like. A trillion, eight hundred million people, yeah, watching, yeah. and then there's going to be our show. <laughs> and it's going to be great. I'm really stoked. Where are you at? We've talked about. I mean, it, you're not just a comic doing serious acting. You're not just a Canadian who goes down to L.A. We've talked before about about being typecast as an ethnic actor and some of the yeah. ways you've resisted that. Yeah, and some of the ways that you've taken the gig. Which yeah, in the case right. of Twenty Four, right, playing the terrorist. Right. Uh, is that softening in LA from your point of view? Is getting this gig evidence that uh, they're they're calming down about that, even if they have to anglicize your last name? On yeah, that? yeah. Um, I think it is. They're definitely trying to push for you know what is what represents the United States of America. Where you know who's what. I mean, I find they do they go a little overboard with it. Like this outsource show. You saw the pilot. I'm curious about what your thoughts were on the pilot because I haven't seen the pilot. I've seen snippets, and I went, oh no, yeah. oh no. I, I'm not sure better. how I feel about it. To be honest, I'm not sure. I think the guy who's coming in, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious to talk to him about it. It's, it's. You a mean, it's you a, mean the, the actor, oh yes, the yes, yes, yes. It's a course. fun idea, but yeah. uh, but I I wonder if it's not actually playing into some of the stereotypes that we try to. That's avoid. right. Yeah. I've heard so many of the jokes. All the jokes that they're using as the sound bites are like, oh no, this is going the opposite way of what I thought yeah, it was yeah, going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you might think that I'm, I don't understand because I'm from India, but, uh, you know, I, you know, it's the same. You're just doing the exact same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. um, but for example, allowing me to play originally my name on this show was detective Aman Mahajan, which I thought was kind of cool. I think it's kind of a, a sexy little fun. Thing. And they were like, um, at first I was concerned that they were going to be like, you have to do an accent. No, I'm not going to do an accent. No, I will not. I went through that with the Farrelly Brothers show mm. where literally I went in to audition for this Pete Farrelly and he's amazing. They're great. But he literally ran through it. He said, can you do it with an Indian accent? This character I was doing on that show. I said, okay, I'll try it. Then he said, can you do it with a Canadian accent? <laughs> I said, what's a Canadian? He goes, I love that Canadian accent. Right. So I'm like, right on. Mm. And then I, you know, I did it like that. And then I did it as myself. And he went, we're doing it with the Indian accent. And I had to go in and test for this show. And I was like, I didn't want to do that, but it's the Fairley Brothers offering right. me a TV show, right. and you get, right. you know. But in this case, they've been, they've allowed me just to be myself with a, with parents of, you know, I'm but a son still of an immigrant family. They still ask you, did you do an accent? No accent, never had. Oh, they never asked. Never you. even. It was. It was I, great. I remember there was a case. I liked was that. it the next big thing? There was that show that where where they wanted you in a turban. Oh no, that yeah, there was a sketch that they did on Cedric. And you wouldn't do it. I fought against it. I said no and you know, but I ended up doing the sketch. Not that there's anything wrong with wearing a turban. No, of no, course, it had but, nothing to do with that. But yeah. the way they treated it, it was like Osama bin Johnson <laughs> and uh, you know, we were coming in as just big turban guys. No real where are we from? Are we Sikh? Are we, you know, are we Punjabi? What are we? Where are we from? They didn't care. They just said turban, and you're applying for a job at a, as a security guard at a nuclear power plant. Mm. That was the sketch. <laughs> and I said, I'm not doing this. Right. I'm from Canada, right. and I know this is wrong. And they're like, it came from the president. You know what? We may never use this sketch. Please. It was an hour-long conversation with the producers. And they had all worked with Jim Carrey, and apparently Jim Carrey 
had the same kind of visceral reaction to sketches like that because he said maybe it's being Canadian. I'm not sure what it is, but you guys seem to resist this kind of stuff. Mm. We did it anyways. It turned out all right because we treated it a certain way. But anyway, this I'm actually really happy with. This is, I, you know, I'm a son of immigrant parents and I, I'm myself. There's no traditional, you know. Right. I was a little bit upset that they changed it from Amon to Vikram. I'm like, why not Boop Hinder? I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> and they were like, no, they, there's all these clearance issues and all this stuff. So Right, right. They couldn't get clearance for Boop Hinder. Boop Hinder they couldn't clear because <laughs> Outsourced already had it. They had it all locked up. Why? You just, well, I've got, geez, i got a minute and a half left with you here. But, but you're still doing stand-up. But why, why continue that? That's obviously something you, you, you want. It keeps your chops up? Or what, what, why are you still doing the stand-up uh, in the midst of being busy with a new big American TV? series you know i will want to continue doing stand-up but honestly this show takes up so much of my time and my headspace you need to be focused and i can't be out entertaining everybody you know thinking about like i gotta go do stand-up but stand-up will always i will always have my hands in stand-up at some point in time in my life because it's it's a cool way of expressing and and keeping my chops up. Hey, man, I'm, I'm so excited for you. This is uh, we've got a great new series. I mean, you're, you're doing really well. Yeah, I'm Congrats. having fun. You're not funny anymore, but you're but very you're doing, serious. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Sean Majumder, he co-stars in the ABC police drama called Detroit 187. He's been with me here live in Studio Q.